Hi all, I have another very exciting game to show you. This is the Leela Test 13 network, which I'm a great fan of. Considering the number of training games, I think it's done remarkably well. And the latest versions are not too far off the 20 network, apparently. This is a game against the mighty Ethereal 11.0, which you might think it shouldn't really have a chance against. So yeah, Leela ID 13929. This is uh, a fast and furious time control, 40 moves uh, per two minutes with a two second increment per move. The opening book given is the Karakhan, and this has been seen a lot in high level over the board games, this variation. So this is the start position with bishop e3. Black played knight d7, and Leela chooses knight f3. In the normal uh, practice in chess based line book, it seems people like pinning the knight to be annoying here. And after knight f3 supporting the center pawn uh, to take on c5, this position has been seen quite a bit and it's thought to be about equal. So knight f3, interesting alternative, bishop takes. And we have bishop takes c5, knight takes, and now queen d4, very energetic, hitting the knight. And ready to attack, try and attack the g7 pawn. So knight d7 we have... Uh, this knight d7, there's also queen b6. Uh, there's a high level game with queen b6 in chess based line book. Uh, for example, Ginocchio against Drazic, Milan 2009. It ended in a win uh, for black. Uh, not, not necessarily all related to this move, it just it just statistically uh, was, was interesting for black eventually. So anyway, we have knight d7. Queen g4 hitting that g7 pawn. And this is a real problem pawn in many variations of the French defense, especially the winner. Nigel Short jokingly said it's like the Achilles Hill. That's the big Achilles Hill of s some variations like the winner. Uh, so we have knight e7 and Lila grabs it. So Fira was playing a kind of gambit game here. Queen b6 though hitting b2. Knight bd2. It's far too dangerous to play knight c3. There's nothing going on here for white. You might think this is clever for a moment. But black has resources. There's no problem here. Black's got a big advantage there. So uh, knight bd2 gets the most out of this pawn sack because of after rook b1. Uh, the queen can't take here, by the way, because we have got distant protection from the queen. So queen c3. Uh, <coughs> If queen takes a2, you might think the materialistic of you might consider this. This position is just really awkward. For example, just as an example, uh, white is doing fantastically well here. Great prospects. Uh, so, yeah, queen c3, bishop b5 anyway. Rook takes g2. So, yeah, the leader is also <laughs> sacrificing g2. And I find this game uniquely interesting. Uh, because it's like the poison pawn and it's and it's opposite G pawn brother the B and G pawns uh, are being snapped off here it's only it's only the B7 pawn which which remains here for black now a consequence of taking these pawns is that the corresponding squares are weakened another consequence you know these tempo gains and here you might think this also could be a tempo gain later for white so there's weakened squares there. Uh, so it's a fascinating position with these chiseled away uh, knights, pawns, queens, knight, kings, like in old notation. So what happens here? So we have, uh, yeah, sorry, rook takes g2 was played. King f1, tempo gain, another tempo gain. And now we have queen a5 we have rook g1 challenging the rook now it's best black played rook f8 if rook takes g1 check this is not very pleasant for black this position black's really tied up and in fact there's huge problems here as this shows because the rook is actually supporting the recapture so this is really undermining uh black's position for example like this is just horrendous uh, big trouble for black huge advantage for white there 
Uh, so this is on the rook takes g1 line. If knight c6 is an alternative, uh, just to give a bit more flavour to things, yeah, it's it's just all a bit nasty for black. This kind of scenario, for example, here is crushing. And uh, if bishop d7, then just queen takes. So, uh, yeah, these, these scenarios are all pretty nasty after king takes g1, whatever way it's uh, cut, it seems. Uh, so basically, uh, rook f8, hiding over there. <laughs> uh, but the rook comes into g7. And, yeah, now we have the move a6 is played. Bishop drops back to e2, b5, and now knight g5. Knight takes e5, knight df3, queen c7, knight takes, queen takes. And now bishop g4, the bishop's coming back with a vengeance. So keeping an eye on things, it looks as though bishop takes e6 would be strong if the bishop dead move. So after bishop g4, we have the move king d7. Rook e3 is played, queen f4. Rook takes f7. Rook takes, knight takes, king c7. Yeah, on bishop b7 we just take on e6, simple as that. So the king makes a run for a bit, a run for it a bit. Knight e5, and now we have queen f6. Knight g6, king d6. And it looks as though has white really got a big advantage? Well, the thing is, there is this outside past pawn. And in this particular configuration, this is actually remarkably dangerous. You might not think it, but because perhaps one factor is the king has moved away from being a defender of this potentially dangerous pawn. That often happens in very high-level games. Uh, you might have, not, might have noticed some GM games where it's, it's, it's past pawns queening when the king's been chased away. Uh, we have here a scenario after knight takes with this uh, position that this is actually a very, very dangerous pawn, and it's pushed, pushed again. And here, yeah, there's also huge pressure on e6, of course. So black's tied up whilst this h-pawn gets underway even further, being pushed down the board to h7. And it's getting really critical. Black's getting really tied down now to h7 and desperately loses a pawn here with bishop e8. Things have cr gone to vast proportions uh, here to have to lose the e6 pawn. If a5, then rook h6, e6 is a big target. For example, like this. And it's just nasty. White will now have the plan of rook f6 to f7, uh, which is why this is apparently is a good move, giving up a rook, which seems totally ridiculous. But let's have a look. If king d6, what white does is basically rook f6 to f7. Uh, so this is threatening, you know, rook takes and then queen takes if queen takes. So say the bishop gets out of the way, but the problem is the king is now in mortal danger uh, along this seventh rank. So for example, defensive moves, white just opens up this side of the board and gets a ferocious attack now. Uh, this this would be a winning continuation with that h7 pawn anyway. So it seems as though this pawn has just got out of control. As Nimzovic would say, you should be locking up the opponent's past pawns uh, 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 as though they're criminals, they need to be put under lock and key. But this one hasn't been. So bishop e8, yeah, uh, things have got really bad for this to happen. So losing that center pawn. So officially a pawn down. And there's a possibility of trapping the rook with bishop g8 now in, in an embarrassing way in some of the variations. So why a5? If d4 not losing the d5 pawn you might think that's useful not to lose that then uh here it's it doesn't really matter the 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 bishop incarcerates the rook and this is highly unpleasant it's just a way of losing material for example like that if we look at this line again uh instead a5 instead of the check 
again this is just highly unpleasant for black all white does is start pushing the f pawn as well and collects the d pawn with the king and it's just all over basically black's not doing anything so it's torture this end game so losing yet another pawn two pawns down officially and the rook now trapped uh now opening up over here getting rid of um, any problems over there and this is quite a trivial win really uh now yeah it's just a winning end game position there's nothing really black can do here the a pawn is winning here the king is just too far away uh so let's have a look and here uh the game ended so yeah uh, another, it's a great uh version now evolution this uh 30 network 30929 watch out for it the evolution graph uh, you can find that on the training runs tab if you go to lc0.org have a look at training runs and you'll be amazed at the progress being made by the test 30 network i think this must be the hottest thing in computer chess ai right now the test 30 network with table based rescoring to be able to de defeat uh, a, a tsec premier engine ethereal is just absolutely incredible even at this fast time control i find that phenomenal progress has been made and a lot of people are switching over their game feeding uh to to the test 30 network i would encourage it myself i've got a very good intuition <laughs> no I i'm not saying i've got a very good intuition i've got a very good feeling rather that the test 30 network is going places but i might be wrong you know maybe it's good to carry on with the test 20 to see what's what's happening with that if there is any unexpected major progress but it's like a roller coaster it's been like a roller coaster up and down for quite a while so anyway if you enjoyed this game video yeah please click the top left box to become a member at chessmold.net and uh, play other youtubers you can also check out the analysis of this and other games from the improved menu learn from the masters okay comments questions like share subscribes uh with the notification bell all really appreciated thanks very much